Okay, so here we are with 2.7 multiplying and dividing decimals. And before we go into the um, exact details on that, I just kind of want to remind us about when we multiply by 10, what we actually do is we move our decimal place over. So what I have right here is if I had, so it gets bigger. Every time we multiply by 10, it gets bigger, which totally makes sense. So I have 0 0.032 or 32, this is the tenths, 100,000, 32 thousandths times 10. It's going to make it 32 hundredths. Okay, take that, times it again. Oh, it's 3.2. So notice what is happening is my decimal is moving over to the place um, value once. And then it's going to be the same. If I'm dividing, it's going to be the opposite. So every time you divide a number by 10, you move the decimal to the left one place. So it gets smaller. So 320 divided by 10. Remember, your decimal place is always right here to the right. Remember, it's kind of like the one. We just don't show it unless we need it. So it goes, if I'm dividing, I move it over to the right. Oh, 32. And then take 32 again. Remember, the decimal is right here. Move it over because I'm dividing. Okay, so when you divide by 10, it moves to the left. When you multiply by 10, your decimal moves to the right. So let's take a look at multiplying decimals. Before you get started, I always want you to think about this is what's a reasonable answer. So if I'm going to round, so round that to 6, and then let's say 50 cents. So half of $6 would be $3. So my answer should be around there. So I'm just going to pretend that I multiply as normal. 1 times 2 is 2. 1 times 8, 8, 5. Add your zero for the place value, gives me 8, 32, and 23. So I get 2, 16, 5, 6, 7, 8, 3, and 2. Now, what I need to do, what's important, is you count the total number of digits to the right of the decimal points in both numbers. So to the right of this decimal I have one two and then I have one two so I have a total of four so from here I need to move my decimal from the right count the same number of total decimal places back so I have four so I go one two three four and you could have also known where your decimal needs to go just by thinking about what your reasonable answer if I didn't have my decimal here, that would be 23,000. If I had my decimal here, it's 2,300, 238, $23, no, 2.3. That's the only place that's close to my estimation. So let's take a look at this one. 1.4, 1 and 4 tenths times 7.2. Again, it's 2 times 4 is 8, 2 times 1 is 2. 7 times 4 is 28, 7 times 1 is 7, 9, okay, and I'm going to look, I have one place here, one place here, so a total of 2, I need to add this, Ten. and then I go back to 2, 1, 2, okay. and again, thinking about what your reasonable answer is, you could re even round that to, to 2 if you want it to, round this to 7, so 14, you know it's going to be less than 14, but 10 is the only one that's close for your decimal. So again, count 1, 2, and then go back to. And then let's just do this last example, 6.89. So 7 times 9 is 63. 8 times 7 is 56. 56 plus 6 is going to give me 62. 6 times 7, 42. 42 plus 6 is 48. Okay. And then I have 1, 2, 3, 4. So I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4. 
I'm just going to add that zero. So bear with me on this example. I'm going to try my best to explain it. Um, just to remind us what a divisor is, dividend, and what the quotient is. So the dog is going to represent the divisor. The hamburger is going to be the dividend. And this lady yelling is the quotient. So if I was to do the top dog in the house, this would be 6 divided by 3. 6 divided by 3 is 2. Okay, so we're going to identify what these numbers are. So let me set this up. Okay, so this would be your 6. 6 divided by 3. And this would be your 2. Okay, so here we go. 6 represents the dividend. Okay, this is your end goal. So you have this puppy, he wants to get in the house, and his end goal, so notice dividend, his end goal is to get inside the house. Okay, the dog has an eye divide, it's eyeing. So it's eyeing the hamburger. So this is going to be your divisor. And then this lady is quoting to the dog. Okay, quoting, you probably see. So she's quoting to the dog. You better wait for your dinner. Okay, so again, this would be your dividend. This is your divisor. And then this is your quotient, your answer to your division. So let me just write this. This is dividend. This is going to be your divisor. And this is going to be your quotient. So hopefully that makes sense. I know I need to work on that. It was just something that Danica mentioned and I thought it was kind of cool. So let's take a look again at this equivalent fractions. Basically what's happening from this fraction to this one is I'm multiplying by my copycat of 10 over 10. And then I multiply this by 10 over 10 again. So I could keep going technically to infinity, but we always have more things, better things to do. Multiplying it by my copycat of 10 over 10, and that's just going to add another zero. I just want you to keep in mind, that's kind of what we use for um, the reason why it works when we move decimal places over. So when we divide, we, again, I know, calm down, pause the slide, okay? Our goal, so again, pause the slide, write this all down. So for dividing decimals, we're going to follow this, okay? We want to get rid of of the decimal. So the way that this would look is this is my dividend and it's being divided by 0 0.09. Okay. So I need to get rid of the decimal in the divisor. So this is my divisor, the dog. It's eyeing the dividend. Its end is to get the hamburger. So I'm going to count how many places you move the decimal. So I need to get rid of this decimal. So I move it one, two. And then to make it equivalent, I have to move the inside decimal two places as well. One, two. Okay. So then I'm nine or 54 divided by nine. My quotient is going to be 6 because 9 times 6 is 54. So for these examples, um, the textbook kind of makes it more challenging, but you want to make sure you round to the nearest hundreds. Let me just remind you what that place value is. So if it was 2.736, this is the tenths, this is the hundredths place. So you look to the right. If it's five or higher, you let it fly. If it's four or less, you let it rest. So this is higher, so I would round that. Six is higher than five, so this is going to raise this up. 
So it's going to be 2.74. And that's something that you should know, but just in case, I gave you an example. Okay, so let's take a look at these two examples. The first one, I'm going, remember this is my dividend, so it goes inside the house. So 2.234 divided by 1.3. My goal is to not have any decimals in my divisor. So I'm gonna move him over one and then move this over one to keep it equivalent. And since I'm putting my decimal here, I'm gonna go ahead and line it up here. Remember somebody said it's like a balloon, so you wanna let it go straight up. So 13 goes into 22 one time. 13. I'm gonna borrow from this guy, and that's gonna give me nine. I bring the three down, and 13 goes into 93. If I estimate it, uh, let's say six, let's try seven. Seven times 13. 21, oh, 91. So 7 times 13 is 91. I'm left with 2. And then I'm going to go ahead and bring this down to 4. So 13 goes into 24 one time. And then that's going to give me 13. And let me see. Borrow. Oh, I don't need to borrow. That's 1 and then 1. I'm going to add another 0. And then knowing that it was 91, let's try eight. So eight times 13, it's gonna be 24, eight, yep, 104. So that's gonna be eight. And technically I don't need to go anymore because I know that I need to round it off here. So I'm rounding to my hundreds place. So I look to the right Five or higher, let it fly. Four or less, let it rest. So this is definitely higher than five. So this is going to change this to a two. So it's going to be 1.72 or one and 72 hundredths. Okay, and then let's, I'm just going to go ahead and erase this. Give us a little bit more space. So again, I'm going to put zero, this is my dividend, it goes in the house, and then 5.2, 5 and 2 tenths. So I have one decimal place here, I need to move it over one here, and then let it soar up here. Okay. So 52 is going to go, can't go into 2, right? so can't go into um, 20 either. So I'm going to estimate here, okay, so this would be a zero as well, I can't go in to 20. So if this was 208, how many times would 52 go in there? So I'm going to go ahead and try, because if I did 52 50s and 100, so let's try 4. 4 times 52, uh, yeah, there it goes. So sorry, two, 208, so it's going to be 4. And this one we didn't have to estimate, so 0 0.04, or 400s. And we'll be practicing in class.